We welcome you to our journey through Sadie's life and experiences. Sadie, I would like to cover most of the of the facets or phases of your life. Uh, let's begin when and where Sadie was born. I was born in Denver, Colorado. I was born at midnight between July 30 and July 31, 1950. Therefore, I find it pleasurable to celebrate both days, the oh. July 30th and July 31. Wonderful. Which are the first memories of you as a child, as far as you can remember, and your perception of your parents, your first memory that comes to your mind? Well, as a child, I spent naturally most of the time with my mother. However, I used to love to take walks in the evening with my father. My mother seemed to be busy at home, and sometimes he would like to go visiting, and he would select Friday night because my mother was religious, and she upheld her religion with orthodox beliefs. Friday night and Saturday, she didn't cook. She didn't light a light, an electric light. So my father was not quite that religious, so we went for a walk. Mm -hmm. And that was pleasurable. I remember holding his hand and walking with him. Mm -hmm. And then I grew a little older, and that stopped. Uh, what was the complete name of your father and mother? My father's name was Jacob. And my mother's name was Eva, E-T-T-A. Do you remember both of her surnames, your father, father's mother surname and your father's? I never knew my grandparents. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about them. Mm -hmm. All I know, knew is that my father had many brothers and sisters born in Europe. Mm -hmm. My mother also. In which part of Europe? Uh, probably Russia, in, in, a, in a very s small area. In fact, it was a ghetto, mm -hmm. a ghetto. And my mother was not happy there. I know she was not happy. My mother was too, too clean with cleanliness, and she was very, very pr particular about it. And I remember she said she could hardly bring herself to go to a store to make purchases of food because she felt that it wasn't as clean as it should be, that people didn't wash their hands as often as they should, that perhaps there were rodents in the area. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and she, that's all I knew about it. I know she had a father. Her mother died young. I don't know from what or why. But <clears throat> after she married, as I remember she said, when she was growing up, she was not very fat or very buxom mm -hmm. because, as I've told you, she said, you don't live to eat. Just eat enough to live, and that's what you live by. That was out of style, because women were large and buxom. So, so they, you, you think your mother has a lot of influence in your philosophy of healthy foods and exercise? Well, I think so. I think so. I think so. So she was ahead of her time. I think so, too. You. I remember she said they told her at the time, you never get a husband if you're going to stay thin like this. But she did have a husband. So, which was your mother's name? Her name was Etta, E-T-T-A, Greenberg. And then your father, Jacob? Kitsis. Kitsis. And uh, I don't know how many of his brothers came to the United States. All I knew was two others. He came first. 
because uh, some other friends from Europe, I don't know exactly how they were friends, but they came first. And then my father came first. And where did he, he went uh, and live in New York or which uh, was a route? Where did he settle? He settled in Denver because so that's where the other people were. Oh, straight. He so he Denver. came to Denver, yes. And my mother followed later when he had enough money saved to have her make the trip. By then, my oldest sister, her, her Russian Jewish name was Fega, which means little bird. Can you hear? Fega. How do you write that? F A G A. Or Fagela, make it Fagela, F A G E L E, that means little bird. And it was at that time Shlomo, S H L O M O. And my mother made the trip with those two children. When she tells about it, it was very, very hard, extremely hard. That, that, that was during the time when there was a great influx of immigrants from Europe. And they put them in, a, they called it steerage on a boat. And they were treated worse than animals. My oldest sister was seasick all the time. And my mother couldn't let her art out of her arms because all those sailors wanted to throw her overboard. They said, she's dead. My mother never allowed her out of her arms. And my brother was two years younger, mm -hmm. and he was a little boy. He was running all around the ship, looking over in the water, and they came running to my mother. He's going to fall in the, in the ocean. And my mother, she said, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't run after him with this one, and I couldn't put this one. She says it was a horrible trip. Then she finally got to New York and had to take a train to Denver. When she was on the train, my brother saw that they were selling bananas. They didn't know what a banana was. He said he wanted one, but my mother said, I don't know what to do with it or how to eat it. Well, they finally saw somebody else eating a banana and they knew what to do. And uh, do you recall when your mother told, told you about doing that uh, trip in a ship? And they were, uh, they had enough food and water? They On the ship, they had nothing. It was horrible. It was a time when they had to go to Ellis Island. It was horrible. That's all I know. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. And she finally got to Denver. And then a life began which wasn't easy. Yes, and uh, which uh, business or, or jobs did your father... The first thing he did, well, the only one, the one that I remember first was he was a laundromat. Mm -hmm. In other words, he would go to houses, pick up their laundry, take it to the laundry, have it laundered, bring it back. And that's how he made his living. Mm -hmm. So I guess we had enough to eat. And then he evolved in other kind of things. Later on, I think I was much of a teenager. And I think at one time, did he become an insurance man? I don't know. But then he got a, he was able to get a second-hand store. And that's what he did. Nothing was very... And uh, it was which kind of business the store? The second-hand store, men's clothes. Oh. Men's clothes. People would bring them their clothes that they didn't want anymore like they do. He would pay for it, and then he would resell mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So, uh, your memories of your parents' character, in spite of all the, the hard times... Uh, My mother's 
character was sterling. Couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. My mother wouldn't even swat a fly. She would chase it out and say the fly had as much right to live as she did. And your father? Well, you know, in those days, father was very loving to his children. In those days, fathers didn't have time to be loving to their children. They didn't have time. They went to work very, very early, and they came home late at night. And it wasn't like it is now. Mm -hmm. It was a different kind of life. So your life as a child, growing up in Denver mostly, which uh, schools did you go? I, I went to, well, they have a, a grade school. And then uh, as I grew up, they built a junior high school, which was the first uh, children, one of the first to attend. That was nice. Do you remember the name of the school? The first school was mm -hmm. Cheltenham, the grade school, C-H-E-L-T-E-N-H-A-M. School was very, very easy for me. My brain had a good brain. You were a good student. Very good. In fact, the teachers, I shouldn't brag, but I'm going to. The teachers used to sit us according to how good we are in school. Mm -hmm. I was always first row in the first seat. And we had a little test sometimes. She would let me help grade the papers. And then school was easy for me all the time because I learned quickly. Favorite teachers do you want to name? Oh, there was a kindergarten teacher that was favorite, yes. I don't know much about I re oh, I'll tell you one thing I remember. Mm -hmm. See, my sister went to school, so she was three and a half years older than I. We were both born in Denver. Mm -hmm. School time came and all the kids went to school. I drove my mother crazy. I said, I want to go to school. I want to go to school. I have nothing to do. I want to go to school. Well, at that time, it wasn't like it is now. You go to school when you're six years old. My mother took me to school when I was three and a half years old. And I was still better than, I was two years younger, they took me. I was two years younger than everybody else. So you went with uh, Sophia? I went, yeah. Okay. Uh, your emotions, aspirations, dreams growing up? Well, incidentally, I might say, because I started school so early, I graduated high school uh, in June before my birthday. My birthday, I turned 16 years old, so I was quite young when I, when I went out in the world. And it was the same? Uh, yeah, I, from junior high, I went to senior high, mm -hmm. and then graduated. And that's the same? No, no. Which is the name of the school? Well, the, the you graduated? North High, North Denver High School. I was the youngest graduate of all five high schools in Denver at the time. And my picture was in the paper because I was younger than everybody else. Uh, which was the address you lived in Denver, do you remember? Uh, I remember the, the street, G-R-O-V-E street. Grove? I don't remember the number. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell me about your brothers and sisters' characters. Well, <coughs> my sister, my oldest sister was 13 years older than I. My brother was 11 years older than I. So I didn't have too much to do with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, my 
my mother tells the time when uh, I was a child, I don't know how old I was, six or so. Before then, I said I had five bosses. I figured my mother, my father. I came home and I said, I don't have five bosses anymore. I only have two, my mother and my father. My sister and brother are not going to boss me anymore. So there's a sign here that I remember. Can you describe it to me? I can't tell you too much about that because I didn't get around that much. We didn't have, we didn't have enough money to partake of some of the culture. But the neighborhood, was it a close neighborhood? You close know everyone? Neighborhood. Close neighborhood. Mm -hmm. close neighborhood. And I graduated high school. I was very anxious to continue and go to the Denver University. Did you begin working? Did you continue studying? There was no fun, so I had to find a job. And which was your first well, job experience? In school, I learned how to type and take short. So I, there was a man that my father thought he was his friend. He was only friends because he, he kind of, what's the word? He just had, my father brainwashed and my father gave him some money mm -hmm. instead of leaving it with his family. So his daughter went to college and I didn't which was terrible. But then I started to work. I worked for somebody in an office a little bit. And, uh, and then the best job I had was when I went to work for a wholesale liquor company. And that was the time I was able to take care of myself. And by then my father had died. He died when I was just 16 and uh, help my mother. What did he die of? Well, he did have a gallbladder. And I know he had surgery. And I remember him being in the house, being very yellow. And I was young, but I didn't, I didn't go into it too much. Mm -hmm. And so I started to work. I was out in the business world. And then I had a little bit more experience being out. Mm -hmm. You told me how you so young. You you worked with like a, with what did you tell me yesterday? What did I tell you? Yes, about your your dedication to your work even oh. at a young age. Well, you can rest assured that one of the things that my three children inherited from me mm -hmm. was being very, very dedicated to their work and, and wanting to do the best and working for somebody else to be ethical, mm -hmm. very ethical, good characters. That's mm -hmm. what I imparted to my children. Well, and now let's uh, cover the area when you first uh, fell in love when oh. did you meet Sam. Sam was born in Brooklyn. I believe he was about nine and a half years older than I. Mm -hmm. And he came to Denver to work for a shoe chain. A small shoe chain, because he knew the business very well. His his uh, his uh, father had a shoe store in Brooklyn, and the whole family lived upstairs. Stores down, they lived upstairs. And uh, he came to Denver. He was originally in the, in the, in the around New York. He was a professional window trimmer for shoe stores. Mm -hmm. And his friends and his brothers, after I knew them a while, they told me at the time he was the best 
think everything, doing everything, and living the life of Riley. And he made more money during the Depression than other people because he was so good. But he spent it all. Spent it all. When I met him, he didn't have a dime. But he worked for this company, and he was going to manage a store through the windows. And then they were opening a store in Denver, or in Albuquerque. In they were opening a store, and they told him, somehow, it's delayed getting open. He says, I'll go down over the weekend, it'll be open. So he went down to Albuquerque over the weekend and opened the store for them. And he was managing the store. Well, before that, I had met him in Denver. And uh, my brother and his first wife and I, I was very good friends with my brother's I used to, my brother used to play bridge in a bridge club every Saturday afternoon, and I used to uh, go with my uh, sister in law. Her name was Roslyn. But we would go to a matinee and a movie every Saturday afternoon, and then afterwards, the bridge club with my brother, and we would go someplace nice for them, either the Brown Palace Hotel or the Cosmopolitan Hotel. in the shoe store right next to her. So he met Rosalind mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. So she married somebody in Denver who was living in Denver. So when I went with her to the hotel, she and Sam saw each other. They got all excited. So we were introduced, Sam and I were introduced to each other. And it started from then on. Mm -hmm. and and his son and parents uh, were born also in the United States or yeah. when they came here? When did they Sam was born in the United States. Uh, his mother and father, they were born in Europe, you know, I'm not quite sure when. In Europe. And Sam had five brothers and twin sisters. And one of his twin sisters died in a fire that they had in their house. And another twin was a, was a female, and that female, I think, was that he had a big family. Uh, but I, I wonder, did you meet them, Sam's parents? You yeah, never met them? After I, uh, I met Sam after his father was deceased. Oh, okay. And after we were married. Oh, when I first came to Albuquerque, I was working at the Payless Drugstore in the office, which was... So you married and you came to live in Albuquerque? I met Sam in Denver, and then the uh, ship chain that he was working for wanted to open up a store in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. and they told him it was taking a long time. He said he was going to go down there and open it up for them. But before that, my sister was married to Abe, mm -hmm. and they were down there with the drugstore, so I thought it would be a change for me to go down and work in the drugstore. Mm -hmm. Well, when I went down to Albuquerque, and then Sam and I spent time and together time. and we married in Albuquerque. Yes, where was that, the wedding? And, and there when? was no wedding. When? We had, when he, was a he wedding? He didn't have a dime and I didn't have a dime. There was no which, wedding. Which year was this? I think it was 1940. Okay. And uh, where did you celebrate the, the wedding or where did it, it take it place? Was, where did, did it take place? Do you remember? 
in my sister's house. Mm -hmm. And nobody was there. Just she and Abe. I mean, we just got married, that's all. Mm -hmm. No wedding, no... We had no money. Yes, well, that's happiness, you know. So you got married to... By then, we had... To Sam. No, he decided to open a store without any money. Without any money. But he knew more about the shoe business than anybody. He knew it from wholesale to retail to jobbing to how to trim a window, how to retail. He, he knew all that from having grown up in New York in his father's uh, shoe business. Back when he was 10 years old, he used to go from Brooklyn to New York to buy shoes for his father's shoe store. So he was able to get somebody. No, we started our business. This is funny. Started, he started the business on the second floor of a building. Where was it located? Fourth and Central in Albuquerque. A second floor, the corner, because it had very large windows. And he was able to get some neon signs made there by somebody who said they'd wait for their money. They waited for the money and the rent. They waited for the rent. And and he opened up a shoe store and he took a trip to a international shoe company in St. Louis, Missouri. The, the store was called Kay's Sample Shoe Store. So he bought the people who lived in Albuquerque are all Mexicans, we called them at that time. They're all little people with little feet. Mm -hmm. So he bought size four shoes, which were the samples, which were very inexpensive. And then some shoes that if a manufacturer didn't get them out in time, for instance, before Easter, then the retailer said, I don't need them after that Easter. So the, the uh, manufacturer was stuck with them, so he sold them to people like that. Mm -hmm. And he had those shoes that he, they said they would wait for money. I don't know. He had a certain way of talking. And we got those shoes. He opened up the business. Which he named? And how did he, he K, came up with K, name? which was my last name initial. Mm -hmm. That's why he got the name K. And I was still working at the Payless in the drugs in the office there. So my salary is what we ate. So we opened up the store, and I used to go in there every day at lunchtime. And I'd go to a, a grocery store across the street. I'd buy two rolls, bread rolls, a small package of cream cheese and two bottles of soda pop. Go up to the store and that's what we'd have for lunch. So one day I was in there and he seemed to have a few customers, ladies. So I, there were two ladies sitting and they, they, they were sisters. And I thought, well, I'm going to go up and see if I can help those ladies. I knew nothing about the sheep business. It's just a, I look and see what somebody does. And, mm -hmm. So I went up to wait on them. I asked if I could help them. They said, yes, they were sisters. One of them bought two pair of shoes for me, and the other one bought one pair of shoes for me. Mm -hmm. After that, my husband said, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> so I became a shoe salesman. Okay. And then from then, we opened us up a store downstairs. And he did the same thing. He was able to get you sent to us without money. He, we got it open, we got some shoes, and we started to sell shoes. Mm -hmm. So uh, when um, did you have your first child? Oh, Jeffrey was born in uh, September, I believe, 1941.
Bob was born in February 1943, 1944. So Jeffrey was born in, Jeffrey was born in, in 1942, I guess. Anyway, Je Bob is a year and a, a, a year and a half younger than Jeff, and Mark is a year and a half younger than Bob. Mm -hmm. They all came quickly because we decided we were going to have three children, which we did. What uh, was that feeling when you knew you were going to be a mother? A mother? My feeling? Mm -hmm. I was sick. Oh my God! I was sick. I couldn't keep anything down. And we not hear anything was like that. Nine months, twenty-four hours a day. I was nauseous for each one. Every time I had a baby, nobody could believe I had just had a baby. I got smaller. I didn't look like I had a child. So and how I, was that uh, life as a working mother, a mother, a wife? Difficult. Those years. Very difficult. Very difficult. There weren't enough hours in the day for me to do everything I had to do. Even though it, by that time I was able to have a living, a living girl, as they call it at that time. And I paid her five dollars a week. That's how it was. And I had my house and my children. My husband was no help at all in the house. So a typical day when you woke up in the morning, how did it go? And you put yourself at that time. You mean after all the children were born? Yes. A typical day. Well, I remember one time. I used to be working while I was pregnant also. I went down to the store every day. We had a little we have a little store right next to the big one where we sold old children's shoes and I was taking care of that. And I was pregnant. I had we had little children's shoes and what we call old lady shoes, like black nurses' oxfords. That's mm -hmm. what we used to wear. And I was pregnant working there. I remember one time, I was still nauseous. And I remember one time I was waiting for a lady. And I said, excuse me a minute. And I had to run out. And Baba, she waited and I come back. She said, you feel better now, girl? I said, yes. And so that's how it went. Not at all. It was many, many years before I was able to buy something we didn't need. All I bought was food. So describe uh, your children, your children's character. How did they get along? Their personalities? Well, Bob had trouble getting along with, with, uh, with them because he was a middle child. He wasn't the oldest, he wasn't the youngest. And he used to fight around with them, I think. And I know when they all three came for lunch, I used to have to sit at the table and watch the thing, kicking each other under the table. They were regular little boys. How was Jeff when he was little? Well, Jeffrey was... Uh, one time, <clears throat> I was nursing Mark mm -hmm. in six months, ago, and I hear Bob and Jeff were outside, and I hear Jeffrey yelling and screaming, and Mom, and Mom, I thought, God knows what happened. Mark in the crib, and I ran out to see what happens. He was holding on to Bob. He said, Bob wants to cross the street, and I can't hold him. <laughs> Uh, they were good kids. They were like kids. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They didn't do terribly bad mischief. I remember once they were in a tree. We had a big tree, mm -hmm. and as cars rode by, they had what do you call those things? A like round thing where they a piece of, mm -hmm. and they doing that. The cars rode. So our neighbor across the street and came in and told me they're doing that. He says that's not good because. 
they could cause an accident. So I went out and I got the kids and I took them in the house. And my theory, theory was, just like my mother, you don't beat up anybody. Mm -hmm. I explained to them exactly what was happening. He says, I know you're having fun, but it's not a good thing to do. You might cause an accident. They said, okay, and they stopped. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to do that all my life. Try to tell them what I think. Let them understand. Mm -hmm. When they're old enough to give it some thought and figure it out. Yeah. Never made them do anything. So Growing up, uh, Jeff already uh, showed signs of his future career? Yes. Yes. When they were just little. Mm -hmm. Just little boys. We had something like a bench down here with a wooden horse's head. You know, they could sit on it and be like a horse. Just a little mm -hmm. thing. Well, I don't know the kids around Buxus. The head broke off, so I came to see if I could glue it. Jeffrey took that out of my hand. He tried to see. He was just, I don't know, three, four years old. He tried to see how it could fit back on. So when they grew up, I knew he was going to be something like an engineer. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. And what about uh, Bob? Bob was a, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know what he was doing. He surprised you? The, the profession he took, he chose? Well, he didn't choose a profession. He was, I don't know what he was doing. I don't know exactly what he wanted to do, but he seemed to be doing all right. Until one time he came home with very bad grades. And I mean very, very bad grades. I don't know if that was the university or where. And I said, Bob, oh, that'll never do. If I knew that that was the best you could do, I would let it go. It's not the best you could do. You're going to have to do better than that. He was at the university. What can they do? He did better. Yeah. And Mark? Mark was a good kid. He got along very well with Bob. He got along very well with Jeff. He was just a plain good kid. My mother used to say he was, he was like an angel. Mm -hmm. He was so good. Uh, which schools they went since elementary to they which went, universities can you tell me? El, yes, elementary, junior high, senior high, and then they all went to UNM. And w which were the names for of the schools in Albuquerque? Uh, Mark, I mean, Jeff and, and Mark went to Lake Junior High, and uh, I mean, Jeff and Bob, and Mark went to Sandia. That's all I remember. It was a senior high. Highland High School, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they all graduated, and at that time, oh, we didn't have any, any money to speak of either, so they all went to <coughs> It was not that expensive. So that's what I went. So uh, you were a, a mother who let your children choose their careers, what they want to do in life. Do you have an expectation for except, them? Except what Jeffrey was in, in college. I guess he came home after he was a freshman. He had a friend, I forgot his name, whose mother was on her fourth Jeffrey came in the house one day and he says, I'm going to join the Navy. First place, I knew he couldn't join the Navy because by then he already had asthma. He couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. He couldn't walk around the block without having to sit down and go. <sighs> when he was two years old, or three years old, around there, that's what he got. I used to sit up all night with him and hold him. And so, <clears throat> the, fine, the doctor uh, decided the, to make a serum, and make a serum, and they gave him shots, and they gave him shots. So every week, I would have to take him on the main 
kids day off, I would take oh my three of them, go down to the doctor's office. The nurse would give him a shot in his arm every five days in the summertime and every seven days in the wintertime. And it would help him somewhat. Mm -hmm. If he ever caught a cold, it was misery. His, 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 his eyes would get black all the way down to here. And I used to have to hold him in my arms so he could. And then after a while, I decided I could give him the shots myself. And who was his doctor? Who was his doctor in all the I don't know. You don't remember? And I decided to give him the shots myself. I said, it's going to be easier. I can do what you did. Mm -hmm. and it, so I got the serum. I got a needle. And that's what I did. And when I, I could tell when he needed it. I could tell when it was five days in the summer. I could tell when it was six or seven. And I knew. And most of the time I got a pretty good in the vein. I didn't know too much. Once in a while I got a little out and it would hurt him. But that helped him. And I did that till he was 16 years old. I gave him the shots myself. And everybody used to say to me, how can you do that? Your own child. I said, come on. It made him feel better. I was happy to do it. So with this condition, there was no way Jeff could go and at least in there. Of course not. And I didn't want him to want to go. So it just so happened that uh, we were in Las Vegas. My husband and I took three kids and we'd go to Las Vegas every once in a while. And while we were there, there was a man and a woman sitting not too far from us. And they heard us talk about Albuquerque and Santa Fe. So they came over and introduced themselves and said that they were living in Santa Fe. So we became a little bit friendly. And after we came home, oh, he was a retired Navy. <laughs> a, re a retired Navy officer. I forgot exactly which office he was. Mm -hmm. And then he said, so I told him, I said, I, I says, I'm going crazy. My son says he wants to go to the Navy. First place I know he can't, but I want him, you know, not to want to go. And he says, he says to me, he says, that's no place for, he says, the Navy is no place for a nice Jewish boy. <laughs> I said, well, come over for dinner sometime and see if we can talk about it casually. So I invited them for dinner. And after dinner, he was kind of talking about what the Navy is like. Mm -hmm. And I made sure that Jeff heard it. And that helped Jeffrey change his mind. Mm -hmm. Because I told him, I said, Jeff, you're an engineer. I can tell you're an engineer. Because he always wanted to fix everything. One time we got the telephone. He connected the telephone from one room to another mm -hmm. room. He wanted to watch TV from his bedroom, and he, he uh, we had a picture tube. I don't remember how we got the picture tube. I guess my husband bought it. This is when we had a liquor store. And Jeffrey got a paper carton like you get from a, from a grocery store. He put the picture tube in there. He made remote control before remote control was even known. He put the, the tube at the foot of his bed of a piece of furniture and he had some right by his head where he slept where he could turn it off and on. He had remote control by himself. Mm -hmm. So I said, you're an engineer, you don't belong in the Navy. So he went. So and uh, Bob when went. They and Mark also studied in the University of New Mexico. They all did because my husband says we have no money to anywhere else because they were all there at the same time. So Jeff uh, went and continued his studies. After he graduated, he wanted to go elsewhere, so he went to, to Southern California and he got a job with uh, Howard Hughes' company. Mm -hmm. And he, did, he got a, a master. Uh, 
After the bachelor's degree, he got the master's degree. Mm -hmm. That's what Jeffrey did in engineering. And Bob, I don't know what kind of degree he wanted, but he got a master's degree at university. Mm -hmm. and, and Mark, uh, he wasn't sure what he wanted. I mean, at the university. And yeah, then he moved also from Albuquerque, very young. Mark? Mark. Mm -hmm. He continued. Where not, he studied the not until he was married, he didn't move. He, he went to the university and he took accounting mm -hmm. and uh, law at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what he is now. He's a tax attorney and a CPA. And Bob liked to do different things, and so just like when he played the piano, when he got a piece to play the piano, as soon as he mastered it, then he lost interest. So uh, Bob used to have a piano lessons. Yes, yes, he did. Yes, he did. When did he begin? When he was still in, uh, in, in grade school, in elementary school. Mm -hmm. He used to practice during lunchtime, mm -hmm. and that's when the mailman came and delivered mail, and that's when the milkman came and delivered mail, and they used to stand there and listen to him for a while. Then he lost interest after a while. So, uh, let's go back to Sam. And, and how he continued his business? He, he, he had other businesses? No. Did you move? No. We had, business? The, we had the shoe store. Mm -hmm. The shoe store. So he decided that he would go into the real estate business. Mm -hmm. That was not anything that he liked. But while he was doing that, uh, a man asked him to buy a liquor license for him. So he, he found a liquor license. At that time, you could buy a liquor license from somebody else. Now you can only buy it from the state. Mm -hmm. But at that time, somebody could send you to the liquor store and the license goes with it, or sometimes they can give up the store and have a license and send you the license. So he found a liquor license for this man who wanted to open up a restaurant and have liquor. All of a sudden, he decided no, he didn't want it. So Sam says, the heck with it, I'm going to open up a liquor store. So we opened up a liquor store. And I could worked in the liquor store. No matter what he did, I could do too. So what was that name on that business? The Royal Liquor Store in Princess Jean Park, right next to uh, Furs, I think, had a big supermarket. I worked in there every o'clock. And uh, when he had the shoe store, you used to leave where I say, you know, the turkey. On Hermosa Street. And how was Albuquerque at that time? Little. Very little. 30,000 people, maybe. And then, then later on you moved to Princess Jean. And yeah, when, uh, the, when, when the kids were older, they were going to junior and senior high. We moved up there to the liquor store. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the economy is getting better. You now not only work, but you take vacations. I have heard of these. The Where vacations? You used to go to on vacation. The only you vaca enjoy very much. The only vacation, that, if you want to call it a vacation, is when I would go with Sam to New York or St. Mm -hmm. Louis to buy shoes. Call it a vacation. And we used to take the kids to Las Vegas sometimes mm -hmm. over a weekend. That was it. I never had what you call it. Where did you used to stay at Las Vegas? The Flamingo. There was another one. The Desert Inn. And there was a one that began with an S. What was the name? I don't know. We stayed at a hotel. And I remember the kids used to go swimming. 
And it used to be very hot in the summertime, and I'd sit under a tree, under an umbrella, and I'd get a heat rash in Las Vegas. Not even being in the sun, and I'd get a heat rash. But I remember the kids used to go in the pool, and Mark was a good diver. I don't know why he was better than them. He used to dive to the bottom of the pool, and he'd find change. And every day he'd come home, he'd get 90 cents and change. <laughs> Yeah, he was the only one, I think. I don't remember them doing it. Well, I, Joe Lawrence. I didn't have time for friends. Mm -hmm. I was so busy with my house and my children. I, I didn't have time to really be really good friends with anybody. Mm -hmm. The only thing we did, we spent a lot of time with my sister and brother-in-law. Please, what about that friendship? Also between Sam and A, they were very close. Hmm? Yeah. Sam, you tell me about anecdotes, that relation with you and your sister Sophia. Oh, she and I were together all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. We used to meet every afternoon for coffee at Denny's or the, or a, someplace like that that was in a shopping center. We'd always park our car in the same place. So if you saw my guy there, you knew I was there. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to know if I'm there, you look to see where I always parked it. That's how we, we would meet each other and have coffee every afternoon. And we always shopped together, always, always. In fact, if people would see me sometime, they'd say, where's your sister? So we were together all the time, the four of us. Sam used to go up to Abe's office and, and straighten it out because he had such a messy office, such a messy desk. And I must say about my husband, he was the neatest person, the neatest. Mm -hmm. When he was having a, a heart attack and we took him to the, to the hospital and the nurse was helping me undress him and he was having pains. He said, now be careful how you hang my pants up. And, and when you put my socks in my shoes, just fold them over. He would only wear wool socks. He said, don't crumple them up. And my children are extremely neat. All of them. All of them. Mm -hmm. So let's cover the area of the, your children's weddings. My children's weddings? Mm -hmm. We got married and Bob did. Yeah, Bob came home one day and said he wanted What a surprise. Mark came home one time, he said he wants to get married. I says, I've been supporting you guys in school, but I'm not supporting any wife. <laughs> I says, I had a hard enough time supporting us. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jeffrey married, uh, what's your name? He married, I forgot her name. She was a nice uh, blonde girl, that I remember. Uh, Jeffrey worked at Hughes Aircraft and he became friendly with a man. The man invited him home for dinner and he had a daughter. And, and so Jeffrey, the daughter, got friendly and they married. That was his first wedding. Yeah. And where was this? Did you ask this? No, that wedding? was in, in, in the Los Angeles area. Did you go? No. And to Bob's? Nobody went. It was a fast marriage. They just got married. Just got married. Call up, got married. They married. And what about Mark? What Did about you go to that wedding? Mark's wedding? Mm -hmm. No? No, you didn't go to any of the three weddings? They didn't have weddings. Oh. Got married and said they're married. Mm -hmm. Bob <coughs> got married to Judy mm -hmm. and uh, they were married. And I so. remember Judy said to me one time after they were married, she said, before we were married, somebody told me that you said, that if Bob gave me up, you would buy him a car. And she says, 
now that I know you, she says, I know you didn't say it. Mm -hmm. I says, you're absolutely right. So your grandchildren tell me about the, your happiness as a grandmother. And Sam, Sam was... Everybody's alive. happy to mm -hmm. be a grandmother. Everybody's happy to, to be a mother. There's no experience that compares with being a mother. Being a grandmother is a different experience. When you're a mother, you have to take care of them. When they're sick, you have to worry about if they're eating, you have to worry about if they're taking a bath, you have to worry about if they're going to bed. When you're a grandmother, you know somebody else is taking care of that. You can just enjoy having a grandchild. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me anecdotes? Anecdotes? Was like oh, uh -huh. Well, I remember Barry and Stacy. I didn't have any money to buy toys for the children. Mm -hmm. didn't have any. didn't buy any. They used to like to go in the cupboard and get pots and pans and make some noise. And they didn't have any toys. I don't know. I don't know if they missed them or not, but I didn't have any money to buy them, so they didn't have them. But that after I had grants, so I used to give them. They grew up, I think, when they were 16 is when I started to give them money for their birthdays. So when Jeffrey became 16, I gave him $16. Bob the same when he was 16. Mark the same was 16. When they were 17, I gave him 17. When they were 18, I gave him 18. And I kept doing that. Mm -hmm. But I remember when Stacy and Barry were little, I one time gave Stacy a dollar and gave Barry a dollar. I said, I don't know why. Barry held on to that dollar till he was till he wanted to do something. Stacy couldn't get to a store fast enough. <laughs> she just couldn't get to a store fast enough. So when she started to work and make her own money, you know, when she's a grown up lady, I used to wonder if she was saving any of her money. <laughs> but I guess she did. Yes. And they were different until uh, Sam used to take Barry to lunch all the time. And he was three, four, five. He couldn't read, you know, he had to go to school yet, so he used to point to the picture of the menu, what he wanted to eat. Sam loved to do that. He only took Barry. For Did they had a favorite place to go? Well, a little place like uh, Denny's or, or some place like that now. The Lions, you know, mm -hmm. And uh, Barry doesn't remember. But wait. Let's see. Makes me sad. You want to take a moment? in the car with him and Judy, I don't know where we go. And he was very quiet. Mm -hmm. And Judy said to him, Barry, what are you thinking about? And he said, I'm thinking of Papa. That's what he called him. Mm -hmm. he, says if, he says, if we think about him all the time, he won't really be gone. Or did you move back to Florida? Oh. Well, after a while. When did you? Sam said we were working too hard, giving most of our profits to the landlord. He said, I don't want to do it anymore. So we sold the liquor store. 
And then afterwards, he started to work for the liquor department in Walgreens of, of, of Payless, mm -hmm. AIDS drugstore. So he was working in there. Then he had a couple of heart attacks. The first heart attack he had was when we were in New York. We were staying at his uh, brother's house, and he had a heart attack. He didn't know. We went to the theater, and in the theater, he was sweating. He was sweating. I didn't know what was. No, I didn't know anything. I thought, why is he sweating so? And he stayed through the whole thing. He wanted to stay. And we had driven to the theater from Brooklyn to, to New York City. Mm -hmm. And he drove all the way home. And he went to bed. And the next morning, I told his sister in law, Betty, Epi's wife, and she says, we have a doctor here in the building. I'll call and make an appointment with him. So we went to the doctor at 9 o'clock in the morning, and he looks at him. He says, you had a heart attack. That was the first one. And this was which, which year? This was? I don't know exactly. More or less, when did his health begin to... I don't, know, I don't know exactly. The kids were, I think Mark was in, uh, Mark was at uh, Georgetown Law School. Yeah. I don't know where Bob was. Where was Bob? Uh, yeah, he must have been married and had, and had married by then, Stacy by then. Mm -hmm. And Jeffrey was also married, I guess. So Sam, so Sam said to you, you he shouldn't work so hard. What did you? What he, were your plans? What he did didn't you tell do? me that. No. He didn't believe in that. Mm -hmm. He believed you work hard all the time. His mind didn't stop for a minute. He was always thinking of something. Always thinking of something. He didn't stop working. We were. We had moved up to Princess Jean in a house, and he wanted to put some stones on wall, electric fixtures at that time. They put on the wall. Till 3 o'clock in the morning, he himself did, a, did all the wiring in the whole house till 3 o'clock in the morning. He should never have done that. I couldn't stop him. He just going all the time. When we had the liquor store, the salesman from the liquor stores would come around to see us, you know, take an order. They used to love to sit and visit with him because he gave them ideas. One of the ideas was, this would be interesting, mm -hmm. Joe Maloof and Company liquor store, mm -hmm. uh, liquor, wholesale liquor store. He gave, see, I think it was not George, but George's brother. I don't know what his name is. So, whatever. He gave him the idea. He said, this bottle of whiskey that, that you make is a bar whiskey with a round bottle mm -hmm. in a quart, and you make the fifth for liquor stores in a square bottle of fifth whiskey, which is many ounces less. He says they both sell for the same thing. You sell it to me for this price and I sell it for about five dollars. You sell it to the to the bars for the same price. He said, why don't you take that one, sell it to the liquor stores. They can sell a quart for five dollars, which will be wonderful. That's what they did. And they became the They're millionaires now. Yes, I gave them the idea. Did you know that? Yeah. And nobody knew. So that was, he had a second heart attack. After his second heart attack, um, new doctor, I don't know.
anybody knows Dr. Bennett. He kind of told me that the next time something happens, a real heart, you can't have more than two. If you have the third one, you're out. I guess Sam knew he didn't have, he himself knew the strength was gone. He knew he didn't have much longer to live. So he says, he'd like to go to Florida to live and be with mm -hmm. his brothers. Which I didn't want to do, of course. But I knew I had to do it. Mm -hmm. So we gave up our house. We sold everything. We moved to Florida. We bought a condominium in Hollywood, Florida. And we furnished it. He went with me to furnish it. And there were people who moved to Florida. They were getting new, new furniture and mm -hmm. new things. They were all running around with yardstick and bed. Let, what do you call it? Take measures mm -hmm. to measure this, to measure that, to measure that. Sam went. He didn't even take measures. He'd tell me he had very specific tastes, certain things he didn't like. He says, you pick out what you want, things you want. I'll look at them, mm -hmm. and I'll select the one. That's what he did. I said, Sam, if we take this couch and this size, and we take this table and put it here, in a round one, and we took this other one and put it there, will it fit on the wall? He'd say yes. And it fit. Didn't have to measure. Mm -hmm. So we finished the apartment, and he didn't have much to do. And uh, I remember Shelly, you know who Shelly is? Um, Shelly is, is uh, what's her name? Sally's daughter. Yes. She was going to, she, she her, her uh, grandmother, her father's mother, mm -hmm. lived in, in Florida then. So she came to visit sometime in the summer. She was still going to school. She came to my apartment and she said one time, she says, Sadie, she says, I hope when I get married and I have an apartment, I hope it looks just like this. She liked it so much. So? So how was life in Florida for you? Not very good. My husband was sick. I used to sit every night, he'd go to bed after dinner, and I used to sit every night, look at that black ocean, and be very unhappy. But was he, at least, uh, even if he was sick, was he happy? He was with his brothers? Oh, yeah, we used to go out. We time. used to go out to dinner, mm -hmm. often with his brother Eppy and uh, and his wife Betty. That's what we would do. That's what was the expense. So he was sick in the afternoon, and so in the afternoon I'd have to go out. So I'd go out and I'd stop someplace and have a cup of coffee, come back and have dinner, and he'd go to bed and I'd sit there. How many years went by? Mm -hmm. See, when you have a heart attack, your heart is damaged. Mm -hmm. Let's say your heart is like this. So the first heart attack, let's say, you have that much damage. So the other can take care of it. If you have a second heart attack and that was damaged, you only have a little bit left. And that little bit left is not strong enough to mm -hmm. take care of it. So the third heart attack came and he had a cerebral hemorrhage. That's when the blood doesn't, can't get to the brain. And he was in the hospital. I used to take him. Sometimes at 3 o'clock in the, in the morning, I would take him to the hospital when he'd get these pains. Mm -hmm. And one time the nurse said to me, Sadie, how'd you get him? Oh, he was big, you know, like, mm -hmm. how did you get him to the hospital all by yourself? How did you do that? How can you take him to the hospital? Before I could even answer, he said she made two trips. <laughs> I, I, I stood him up, put his arm around me, and I held him, and we walked to the car, and I drove there. And that's how it was. It was. 
So after he died, I said, I'm not staying there. I'm going back. So sold my condo, sold all my furniture. Mark was already living in San Francisco. Jeffrey was already in South. And I didn't want to come back here for the reason that I didn't want to be a threesome with Soap and Abe. Because we were always together, so I thought, come back and so the three of us be together. And I thought, that won't do. So I said, I'll try California. Okay. So, uh, how do you recall Sam's sense of humor? Well, all I can say is, and I'm not the only one who said it, other people. He was the wittiest, the cleverest person they ever, ever met. Mm -hmm. He had very good business sense very good business sense. He had very good artistic, artistic uh, ability, which is unusual in a person. I think Bob has some of that. Mm -hmm. And when I lived in Florida, after we had dinner, at dinners in general, they go and sit around the pool and visit. Sam, I'm busy, I'm cleaning the kitchen and this and that. He would go down. And they just love to listen to his stories. They, all the people there, they just listen. Whatever they were saying, as soon as he showed up, they, they stopped talking and everything. So when I would come down, I knew that when you have, have what people understand, that when you talk, it taxes your heart. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. When you speak, it taxes your heart. When you walk, it taxes your heart. When you walk, you should not speak. It's too much. But that's the side beside the part. Well, I knew he shouldn't talk, because by the time I got downstairs, she was out of breath. So the minute he would see me walking out of the door, he used to say, here comes the morning. <laughs> because I would go up there and I'd say, stop talking. He'd say, here comes the warden. They used to love to listen to him. Just love to listen to him. So Sam was buried in Albuquerque? Yeah, we... You brought him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. His, 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 um... I went to Albuquerque. No, I, I... I went to California and I went to Mark. And then we just, I just told him, I, one morning I woke up, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do yet. One Sunday morning I woke up and uh, I was reading the newspaper because I'd get out of bed at 530 and I still don't sleep. And I saw a big pictorial magazine uh, about real, real estate and homes and things like that, and I was looking through it, and I read this about Watergate, where I'm living now. And it was a brand new, uh, uh, it was a rental. It was a rental. And when Mark got up and said, Mark, I'm going to rent an apartment here. I'm going to move up here. I said, I'll go back, I'll sell my, after, you know, after the funeral. I said, I'm going to uh, sell my condo, everything, and move up into that rent. So I remember he looked at me with this, you know, how he smiles sometimes. He says, okay, we'll go look at it this afternoon. Looked at it that afternoon and I rented it just like that. My book, it wasn't even finished yet. They were working on mine. So I went back to Florida and I sold my apartment with my furniture. Some people, they wanted the whole thing. And all I brought back was the table I have in my kitchen and I think I brought back 
my mattress because it was made special. It was a special good mattress. Mm -hmm. And I sold all the furniture. So I came I came to uh, San Francisco or the Bay, what, the Bay Area. And I said, well, I have to furnish my apartment empty. Funny thing if it was, I had a big black, not black, big border of Cadillac in Florida. Oh, it was a 1972. And my brother-in-law, Epi, said, <clears throat> there are people who will drive your car to California because they want to go to California and they'll drive your car to California and then you get it there. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't pay them and they don't pay you. They pay their own way. And so we found through a, a, some companies that's a good business to have, you know. That's a good idea to go to business like that. Find people who will drive other people's cars if they don't want to go somewhere. Good idea. Well, uh, that's what happened when they got here. I wasn't here yet because I decided to take the cruise from Florida to California because I had two weeks or three weeks before the apartment would be ready. They were still building it. So I went on this cruise for 17 days from Florida to California. And this couple, they got to, to California before I did. So Mark, he had the key or something, and he let them in. Normally, they had very little to bring them, but I remember I had a box of tools. In fact, I still have it. There's a paper carton with a bunch of tools in there. And they put everything right in the middle of my living room. And guess what? It rained. And the roof wasn't finished. <laughs> it rained on all my tools. And the tools I have now, some of them are still rusty. Uh. <laughs> and then I came up here. I'm not here. Right now. In Emeryville. And uh, I found a place where I selected furniture. There was a nice young man helping to select. I selected my furniture by picture. I selected my material. And I had it all made. And then it was delivered, and uh, I said, now, now what? I've been busy all my life, 24 hours a day. I mean, there were not enough hours in the day for me. I said, I'm going to find a job. So there was somebody living at Watergate at the time, a young couple. I guess I said something to her, and I said something about having a liquor store or something like that. She says, you know, we need somebody in my office. She says, as long as you know something about liquor, come on down. So they hired me. And I worked there. Which company was that? Well, you wouldn't know it. It's just that they were, they were what you'd call brokers. Mm -hmm. they, they, they handled uh, certain items for different uh, wholesalers. Mm -hmm. And then they, yeah. So uh, I worked in their office. And when I first went there to work, I really felt stupid because I hadn't worked for anybody for all the time I was married. My husband wouldn't let me work for anybody. He said, you're going to work, you work with me. So whatever he did, that's what I did. So I was working all the time. I was busy, busy, busy. Went in there. And she was busy. She was doing, you know what those bills of lading are? Mm -hmm. Lading? And you make shipments from, from uh, country to country. I didn't know what she was doing. All of a sudden, my typing wasn't so good. I forgot her name. She was an old maid. You know what a typical old maid? A typical old maid. She never got married. She lived with her mother. 
uh, that when I first started to work the second week, it, they had 100 degrees in San Francisco. 100 degrees with their humidity is awful. <coughs> we were in the little room and she had to close the door. I almost died, but that's a great one. But she said to me, she says, I can see you're not stupid. She says, never mind. She says, it'll come to you very quickly. Mm -hmm. And she did. So I worked there for quite a few years. And then they decided to move their office to one of the men was getting older and the other when they were partners, they decided to move their office to Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. So I was without a job. Is I'm going to look for another job. By then I was felt a little more secure. And I went looking for a job. And I saw an ad in the paper one day. Insurance brokers, they want uh, somebody to work in the office. So I said, I have enough experience that I, I know what to do. Doesn't matter what they're saying what they're selling. They could be selling shoes, I know how to do. They could be selling this, I know how to do. I know how to do everything. Mm -hmm. I have selling experience and all this experience. I went looking for a job and this were two, two gentlemen. They were partners. They were partners only with the expenses. They each had their own clients. So I interviewed one first. He kind of liked me. I was 59 years old at that time. Mm -hmm. Still looked nice. And he said he'd like for me to come back the next day and talk to his partner. I said, okay. And I gave him the reference. This was my previous boss in the, in the uh, other job that I had. So he called me. His name was Sanford Angster. He called me that evening at home. And he said, I talked to Mr. Fischel today. And he said you weren't worth a damn. I said, what? Say that. He said, whatever he said, he decided that he wanted me. So I went down the next day and spoke to Mr. Ozer. He satisfied with me, and I went to work. And the first thing I remember I said, the dictating machine is no good, you need a new one. He says, okay, whatever kind you want, we'll get. I said, you need a better typewriter? He said, we'll get a new typewriter. They liked me right away because when I worked for somebody, it was like it was my own business. Mm -hmm. They could see that right away. Mm -hmm. After I was there for a few months, Sanford Annister came up to me. And he said, you know, most of the time when somebody new comes to work, the boss always comes up and say, oh, you're not doing this good, you're not doing that good. And mm -hmm. He says, I just want you to know that we're very happy having you work here. He says, he says, there's no use telling you what to do because you're going to do it your own way anyway. He says, and that is very, very good. Continue that way. And I thought that was one of the nicest things that anybody ever said to me. So I continued to work there, and I continued to, to, to live at Watergate, and it, it was nice. There were a lot of people there who were kind of strangers with each other, and they would get together on a Friday night. And, it was, it was pretty good. And then after a few years, one of the ladies says to me, she wants to go to the Jewish Community Center in San Francisco one night. They were having some kind of dinner. They said, if you want to go, if you want me to go with you, I'll go with you. So we went. And that's night. I met Hans. And we met Hans there. And, uh, because he was with a, a, another man that this friend of mine knew. She, they knew each other previously, so when they 
got together to talk, and so we got together to talk. And the next night he invited me to come to his house for dinner. So I took my car and I went to his house for dinner. And then we started being together. Very good, Sadie. So your life uh, was very close to Mark and you had the I was busy working. I didn't have too much time to spend with a grandchild, with a grandchild of Sam White, mm -hmm. like I would have liked to do. I didn't. I was. I had a life that, that I was busy. I was going to work every day, and then I spent weekends with Hans. So we used to go when it was Mother's Day. They'd invite us, and he'd go with us when it was. A birthday, things like that. Yeah, we went to the yeah. Which I didn't have much chance with Barry and Stacy because I had already moved to Florida. And what about your taste for traveling? My taste for traveling? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, uh, I made arrangements for a trip to go. What do you call that where they? They take single, single people to different places. Single tours? <laughs> I know that they are companies that specialize in those trips. Yeah, but this, this was virtual. very well known at the time. Well, that's when I started to travel, when I had a little bit of money when I was on my own. Because that's the only time I ever had a vacation, is when I worked for somebody. When I had my first vacation, I didn't know what to do with it. I never in my life had a vacation. Never. That was the first time I had a vacation. And where did you go to the vacation? I went with a friend at, uh, who lived at Watergate, and I think she and I took a trip to the Greek islands.
She said, I'm taking a cab. When she got out of the cab and started walking up the stairs, my husband says to me, my God, she looks just like you. The Christians, mm -hmm. they would go to Mass. And the priests told them that the Jews Jesus Christ. These was in Russia. Probably all over. But the so, story your mother tells is in so, Russia. You know, out of the church, guns and hatchets, and they went in the ghetto, and they just went in the houses and killed everybody. That's what they did. So now, what about Second World? Children were born before September 15th. We didn't have to go. Jeffrey was born in September 11th. So my husband didn't have to go through more. We had just opened up a shoe store. We had just borrowed $500 from the bank and gotten all the shoes that we were. God, what am I going to do with a baby? shoe store? What do I know about it? I was lucky that he didn't have to go. Mm -hmm. Even then it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what else I can tell you. Mm -hmm. You know how I am now. <laughs> tell me about, uh, do you like to read? Do you have hobbies? Do you like to dance? What about your, your dancing? I used to do or dressing so elegantly. Your dancing. favorite perfume. <laughs> dancing I used to do with my husband. Mm -hmm. We used to do that. He was not a very good dancer, but I kind of led him a little bit, and then he became better. We used to like to dance. Mm -hmm. Every time we went to New York uh, to buy shoes, we either went to the Cabana, which was the nightclub, or there was another one. We used to go dinner dancing, which I enjoyed very, very much. Uh, liquor, he didn't care for it. He always said, liquor is for sale. 
selling, not for drinking. Didn't go for liquor. And they didn't go for cigarettes either. I think one time somebody tried them, I think Bob maybe or Mark or both of them. They didn't like it. But that was one of the things that helped my husband have a heart attack. And uh, as I told you, I was so busy I didn't have time for hobbies.
just put a little salt on it. for pain. I said, you don't have to bother. He says, I know you're not going to take it anyway. I said, no, I'm not. Because drugs, no matter what, Joey, even if it's an aspirin, it has a side effect. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. I say, if you have an act, if you have a headache, if you have a headache, I'd say, if I have ever had a headache, would you say it? I'd stop and think. Do I have it because I'm hungry? Something is bothering me? Do I have it because I did something I shouldn't have done? Mm -hmm. I figure out why I have the headache, and then I change it. The headache goes away. I take an aspirin if I don't have any side effects. That's because I think each person should accept his own responsibility. You have to take care of yourself. And you have to make it so that you don't have to depend on somebody else to take care of you. So I became independent. I've always was independent. I always liked to take care of myself. And I still feel it's important now I have to take care of myself. I don't have anybody to take care of me. I have to take care of myself. So I'm lucky. I like to do the things that are good, and I like to eat the things that are good. And I don't want my children to have to worry about me. After my husband died, or a month or so, afterwards, I was moving and all that, and I said to Jeff, I said, you don't worry about me, do you? He says, no. He says, I know you can take care of yourself. tried to bring my children up that they take care of themselves when they were little. My mother says, she says, you're trying to make little men out of them. I says, I there's going to come a time when they have to take care of themselves and they've got to learn how to take care of themselves. That's very important. Very beautiful to you. This has been an inspiration. That's my that's my so philosophy. And listening to all your stories and I think this is a beautiful legacy for your family, for your children and grandchildren. Yeah. My mother was very meticulous about herself and her clothes. Mm -hmm. Once she combed her hair, you dare not touch it. Because her hair had thinned quite a bit like mm -hmm. when she used to make it just so, so it would stay. She'd have, she'd use some water on it, which you don't do. And if you get near her, be careful with my hair. My mother, did I tell you about this? We used to tell my mother she was cute sometimes. Cute sometimes. And she dressed nicely too. She didn't, as I told you, she nice. She, she never would listen to anybody who would gossip to her. Never. Ever. When I was a child growing up, you know how children are, they're outside playing, and one, they fight, and one gets mad at the other, and one's when, I remember, <clears throat> somebody ran home crying to the mother. And the mother said something. I was a tough kid. Nobody could push me over. I guess I've been tough all my life. And the mother would come complaining about me or anybody else. My mother would say, listen, in five minutes, the kids are going to be friends again. Mm -hmm. She says, if we talk about it, she says, we'll become enemies. my mother was 
something about dancing
I took off my shoes, up right up there. Great, great. The next day, while I was, the lady said, we're just Worry about Sam falling out of bed. My husband. <clears throat> oh, coming back. Incidents in my life. Sam, quite ill. Malacruki to Florida. Too hard to tell. Much as I do. No, um, little five feet or a little over, and I manipulated him. And one time he kind of while he was sitting, he just kind of slept. And I was wondering how I was going to pick him up and get back on the bed. It was late at night, and I didn't want to bother neighbors, and so I got the idea, and I turned him around. One leg at a time, and I got him on his knees in front of the bed, and then I lifted up one leg and pushed him over. The other leg pushed him over, and he was back. Another time, pains. Around my neck, I put my his arm around my neck, my arm around my neck. car. The emergency, and after he was there a day, he was come home. He called me. He says you better come again. Okay, four o'clock in the morning again. I had to go get him and bring him home. The next time we went to the doctor, the doctor said to me, Sadie, how did you manage to get to the hospital? She said she made Well, right now, I do want to mention my children are, are, are healthy. They're not all wealthy, but they certainly have grown up. me happy and their three spouses get along wonderfully well and that is another thing that makes me happy and I'm happy that I am healthy and very healthy for my and everybody tells me I look good how old are you and I feel good this year to go over Is my sister Leah broke her hip? She hasn't been the same. Not the same as she was. The part that really is my heart. She's in constant and I think and she says it's a nurse. And I can't understand why why the doctors don't prescribe. Some kind of a mild drug that, that's against the law, like marijuana or something like that. That would help her. So she to be in pain 24 hours a day. She's in Modesto. I'm in Modesto. sister's gone. My brother is gone.
who are engaged in um, Oh, Sophia's are doing exceptionally well. Her daughter, Bonnie, is uh, in Modesto and taking care of her very, very well. And uh, she comes to visit. And Morty is in business. Santa Cruz, California. Labe. He's married to Barbara, and he has a son who is, well, I guess he's just about ready to graduate from college. Uh, his name is Matthew. He's uh, the pro product of Morty's first wife, now his wife, Barbara, and they have a grand little boy. His name is Abe. He's about three years old now. And Bonnie's uh, all out on the road. She seems to be doing very well. And uh, children. I think that's the extent of our family. Okay. I will say that if I miss them, I was still better than I was two years younger. They took me. I was two years younger than everybody else. So you went with uh, Sophia? I went, yeah. Mm. Uh, your emotions, aspirations, dreams growing up. Well, incidentally, I might say, because I started school so early, I graduated high school uh, in June before my birthday. My birthday, I turned 16 years old, so I was quite young when I, when I went out in the world. And it was the same? Uh, yeah, I, from junior high, I went to senior high, mm -hmm. and then graduated. And that's the same? No, no. Which is the name of the school? Well, the, the you graduated? North High, North Denver High School. I was the youngest graduate of all five high schools in Denver at the time. And my picture was in the paper because I was younger than everybody else. Uh, which was the address you lived in Denver, if you remember? Uh, I remember the the street, G R O V E Street. Grove. I don't remember the number. Mm -hmm. So, uh, tell me about your brothers and sisters' characters. Well, well very close. my sister, my oldest sister, was thirteen years older than I. My brother was 11 years older than I, so I didn't have too much to do with them. Mm -hmm. But uh, my mother tells the time when uh, I was a child, I don't know how old I was, six or so. Before then, I said I had five bosses. I figured my mother, my father. I came home and I said, I don't have five bosses anymore. I only have two. My mother and my father. My sister and brother are not going to boss me anymore. So there's a sign here at the time in Denver. Can you describe it to me? I can't tell you too much about that because I didn't get around that much. We didn't have we didn't have enough money to partake of some of the culture. But the neighborhood, was it a close neighborhood? You close know everyone? Neighborhood. Close neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Close neighborhood. And I graduated high school. I was very anxious to continue and go to the Denver University. Did you began working? Did you continue studying? There was no fun, so I had to find a job. And which was your first well, job experience? In school, I learned how to type and take shorthand. 
so I... There was a man that my father thought he was his friend. He was only friends because he, he kind of... What's the word? He just had... My father brainwashed and my father gave him some money mm -hmm. instead of leaving it with his family. So his daughter went to college and I didn't, which was terrible. But then I started to work. I worked for somebody in an office a little bit. And, uh, and then the best job I had was when I went to work for a wholesale liquor company. And that was the time I was able to take care of myself. And by then my father had died. He died when I was just 16 and uh, helped my mother. When did he die now? Well, he did have a gallbladder. And I know he had surgery. And I remember him being in the house being very yellow. And I was young. I didn't, I didn't go into it too much. Too much. Mm -hmm. in the business world. And then I had a little bit more experience being out. Mm -hmm. You told me how you were so young. You you work with like you what did you tell me yesterday? What did I tell you? Yes, about your your dedication to your work even oh. as a young age. Well you can rest assured that one of the things that my three children inherited from me mm -hmm. was being very, very dedicated to their work and, and wanting to do the best and working for somebody else to be ethical, mm -hmm. very ethical, good characters. That's mm -hmm. what I imparted to my children. Well, and now let's uh, cover the area when you first uh, fell in love when oh. did you meet Sam. Sam was born in Brooklyn. I believe he was about nine and a half years older than I. Mm -hmm. And he came to Denver to work for a shoe chain. A small shoot chain because he knew the business very well. His his uh, his uh, father had a shoe store in Brooklyn, and the whole family lived upstairs, stores down. They lived upstairs, and uh, so he came to Denver. He was originally in the in the. In the around New York. He was a professional window trimmer for shoe stores. And his friends and his brothers, after I knew them a while, they told me at the time he was the best of us, the best of us. And he lived a very bow brummel life, if you know what I mean by that. Being around, seeing everything, doing everything, and living the life of Riley. And he made more money during the Depression than other people because he was so good. But he spent it all. Spent it all. When I met him, he didn't have a dime. But he worked for this company, and he was could manage a store, trim their windows, and then they were opening a store in Denver or in Albuquerque. In Albuquerque, they were opening a store, and they told him somehow it's delayed getting open. He says, "I'll go down over the weekend; it'll be open." So he went down to Albuquerque over the weekend and opened the store for them. And he was 
managing the store. Well, before that, I had met him in Denver. And uh, my brother and his first wife and I, I was very good friends with my brother's first wife. I used to, my brother used to play bridge in a bridge club every Saturday afternoon, and I used to uh, go with my uh, sister, well, her name was Rosalind. We would go to a matinee in a movie every Saturday afternoon, and then afterwards, the bridge club with my brother, and we would go someplace nice for them, either the Brown Palace Hotel or the Cousin Paul Hotel. And I went with them. And one night, I, I don't remember which hotel it was. Um, Rosalind's mother used to have a, a store in Los Angeles where she sold lingerie and hosiery and things like that. And Sam used to go and trim the windows in the shoe store right next to her. So he met Rosalind mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. So she married somebody in Denver who was living in Denver. So when I went with her to the hotel, she and Sam saw each other. They got all excited. So we were introduced, Sam and I were introduced to each other, and it started from then on. Okay. Uh, uh, Sam parents uh, were born also in the United States, or yeah. when they came here? When did they Sam start? was born in the United States. Uh, his mother and father, they were born in Europe, you know, I'm not quite sure when, in Europe. And Sam had five brothers and twin sisters. And one of his twin sisters died in a fire that they had in their house. And another twin was a female, and that female, I think, was that he had a big family. Uh, but I, I wonder, did you meet them, Sam's parents? You never met them? After I, uh, I met Sam after his father was deceased. Oh, okay. And after we were married. Oh, when I first came to Albuquerque, I was working at the Payless Drug Store in the office, which was. So my, you married and you came to live in Albuquerque? Sam. I met Sam in Denver and then the a ship chain that he was working for wanted to open up a store in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. and they told him it was taking a long time. He said he was going to go down there and open it up for them. But before that, my sister was married to Abe, mm -hmm. and they were down there with the drugstore, so I thought it would be a change for me to go down and work in the drugstore. Mm -hmm. Well, when I went down to Albuquerque, and then Sam and I spent Time and together time. and be married in Albuquerque. Yes, where was that, the wedding? And, and there when? was no wedding. When? We had, when he, was a wedding? He didn't have a dime and I didn't have a dime. There was no which, wedding. Which year was this? I think it was 1940. Okay. And uh, where did you celebrate the, the wedding or where did it, it take it place? Was, where did did it take place? Do you remember? In my sister's house. Good. And mm -hmm. nobody was there. Just she and Abe. I mean, we just got married, that's all. Mm -hmm. No wedding, no... We had no money. Yes, well, that's happiness, you know. So you got married to... By then, we had... To Sam. No, he decided to open a store without any money without any money. But he knew more about the shoe business than anybody. He knew it from wholesale to retail to jobbing to how to trim a window, how to retail. He, he knew all that from having grown up in New York in his father's uh, shoe business. In fact, when he was 10 years old, he used to go from Brooklyn to New York to buy shoes for his father's shoe store. So he was able to
to get somebody. No, we started our business. This is funny. Started, he started the business on the second floor of a building. Where was it located? Fourth and Central in Albuquerque. A second floor, the corner because it had very large windows. And he was able to get some neon signs made there by somebody who said they'd wait for their money. They waited for the money and the rent. They waited for the rent. And and he opened up a shoe store and he took a trip to a international shoe company in St. Louis, Missouri. The, the store was called Cave Sample Shoe Store. So he bought the people who lived in Albuquerque all Mexicans, we called them at that time. They're all little people with little feet. Mm -hmm. So he bought size four shoes, which were the samples, which were very inexpensive. And then some shoes that if a manufacturer didn't get them out in time, for instance, before Easter, then the retailer said, I don't need them after that Easter. So the, the uh, manufacturer was stuck with them, so he sold them to people like that. And he had those shoes that he, they said they would wait for money, I don't know. He had a certain way of talking. And we got those shoes, he opened up the business. Which he named, and how did he, he K, came up with K, name? which was my last name initial. Uh -huh. That's why he got the name K. And I was still working at the Payless in the drugs, in the office there. So. My salary is what we, so we opened up the store, and I used to go in there every day at lunchtime, and I'd go to a, a grocery store across the street, I'd buy two rolls, bread rolls, a small package of cream cheese, and two bottles of soda pop. Go up to the store, and that's what we'd have for lunch. So one day I was in there, and he seemed to have a few customers, ladies. So I, there were two ladies sitting, and they, they, they were sisters. And I thought, well, I'm going to go up and see if I can help those ladies. I knew nothing about the sheep business, nothing. 